With the Home Depot app, your phone is your most powerful tool. Find just what you need in a snap. Get a second opinion in seconds and have it all delivered free. Download today. The Home Depot. How doers get more done. A top 25 showdown in Stegman tonight. Number 19, Arkansas, comes to Athens looking for its first win here since 2009. Both of these teams coming off a loss to the best team in the SEC, the one at the top of the standings. That would be South Carolina. But Georgia sitting at 4-2 and two in SEC play. Meanwhile, Arkansas, a very tough schedule so far. They're 2-4 and four in conference action. Excited to be with you, Courtney Lyle, alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. And if you like offense, Arkansas is the team for you. They are sixth in the nation in points per game, and they have multiple weapons. Well, they have the leading scorer in the SEC in Chelsea Dungy that has the ability to score in so many different ways. She's going to score off her defense. She can knock down the three. She can get to the paint, and she is fantastic at getting to the free throw line. But the one player that really will mess up your scouting report, that's Michaela Daniels, because she is able to take away or to score on things you try to take away from her. Her quickness and her smarts on the court help get everybody involved. And to go along with Daniels is Destiny Slocum. This Arkansas team has so many different ways to score. They all can score from the perimeter. They all can get to the lane. And they're tops in the SEC in several offensive categories, averaging 86 points per game. But this Georgia defense has only given up 80 points one time this season. Because the Georgia Dogs know all the key elements to tight defense. And first, you've got to bring energy and intensity. They have quick hands. They have the ability to turn you over. And you know what else Georgia has? They have length. And they've got shot blockers inside that make it really difficult for any team to score in the paint. Hey, Jody Taylor says defense travels. Well, they're at home. So let's see how good that Georgia defense is tonight. Will it show up in Stegman? Georgia absolutely loves to play defense. Arkansas loves to shoot the basketball. It was Georgia getting the win when these two teams met last season. Arkansas was held to just 55 points in that last meeting by this Georgia defense. Monday night in the SEC, top 25 teams. Sounds pretty good. And Arkansas starting out in a man-to-man, -man, getting a deflection right away. Arkansas sticking with this starting lineup. Lots of firepower we told you about. There's Chelsea Dungy for the first shot. She's deadly. One of the things to keep an eye on is where is Chelsea Dungy? Is she playing in that middle third in that lane area? Or does she move over to the wing area? Depends on who's guarding her. Gabby Connolly will take the three. Rebound by Maya Caldwell. Arkansas almost had a steal. And Georgia will go inside for the bucket by Jordan Isaac. She's going to the line. That foul is on Taylor Thomas, her first. This is Georgia's same starting lineup that they've used all season. Jenna Stady could be really big for them inside. No pun intended, big inside. She is the, the tallest player, and no, not anybody that plays for Arkansas really can, can match her length. We were talking about the matchup. Who was guarding Chelsea Dungy, number 33 in wide? It is Q Morrison right now. She grabs the rebound. And Georgia throws it away. Mike Neighbors talked about how Robert Mosley, who's the assistant coach for Georgia that did the scout last year, preparing for Arkansas, and how he did a nice job of really, he's got the, he has the, he has the equation solved on how to stop Arkansas. You've got to keep them in front of you, and then that, Georgia has those rim protectors from behind. Michaela Daniels hits the three. Arkansas hit a season low last year against Georgia of just three three-pointers. Remember, this is an Arkansas team this season that's averaging nine and a half threes per game. 
Here's Q Morrison. Stady on the roll with range. just gives it up and coughs it into the hands of Michaela Daniels. Good transition defense by Arkansas. They are really stopping the ball handler. That's going to be a foul on Q Morrison. Well, that could be crucial because Georgia needs to have that energy on the floor that they get from Q Morrison. Yeah, watching this Georgia team against Tennessee when they upset the Lady Balls in Knoxville and then watching them against South Carolina, Q Morrison was more in control offensively in that Georgia game and it paid, excuse me, in that Tennessee game and it paid off for Georgia. And I really like Q Morrison running the point because that moves Gabby Connolly off into a shooting position and Q Morrison just sees the floor so well. That's four turnovers now by Georgia. And one for Michaela Daniels. With all the other sharpshooters for Arkansas, sometimes Michaela Daniels gets looked over, but she shouldn't. Well, this is why the shooters get open, because Michaela Daniels attacks down the middle of the floor. Daniels, just a sophomore, started every game last season at Arkansas, averaged about nine points per game this season. That's up to 13. And that's the advantage that Georgia has. Going inside the Jetta Stady, before they were trying to post up Jordan Isaacs, why not go to Stady? She's got the biggest height advantage. And she gets the rebound on the other end. What a move from Maya Caldwell. A little Euro step, I like that. Georgia starting to feel out that rhythm against this Arkansas team. And Dungy will go to the free throw line. She's one of the best at getting there. The top scorer on this Arkansas team, averaging 21 and a half points per game. Well, Chelsea Dungy just is so hard to guard because she's the threat from the three-point line. And then when you play her tight, she goes right by you and gets to the basket. And then she can put up shots and use her body to get herself to the free throw line. Third in the nation in free throw attempts. And even bigger, Q Morrison has picked up her second foul. That's what I told you. I thought that would be key. When she got that first one early, she needed to play a little bit more cautious. And now picking up two, having to go to the bench. So that means Gabby Connolly will be running the point for Georgia. She's number two in the black jersey. Caldwell weaving through traffic, banks it high off the window. Maya Caldwell needed to get her offense going. Last two games, she's been 0 for 10 from the floor. So that's a good sign for Georgia. Thomas in and out. Jenna Stady hit the deck pretty hard on the other end. We'll keep an eye on her. What a pass inside to Isaacs. Six straight shots made by Georgia. Now Michaela Coombs has the assignment of guarding Chelsea Dungy. Arkansas keeps it thanks to the possession arrow. Yeah, not only is it, we've talked about Q Morrison running this offense, the facilitator that she is, she's their best on-ball defender, which is why they started her out on Chelsea Dungy, and she's on the bench with two fouls. Easy bucket. Well, because Dungy is so hard to guard. You just saw there, she just gives it, the defense a little juke move, and then she finds herself wide open. Stady with Thomas on her. Gabby Connolly for three! 
That's big for Georgia. If Conley's hitting shots from the three, but this is a tough matchup right here. Connolly will try the other side. Doesn't matter. Anywhere behind the arc, it's Gabby Connolly. If she's hitting shots, that bodes well for this Georgia offense because it's going to pull Arkansas away, which could open up Jenna Stady inside even more. Six straight points for Georgia. And it's touched by Arkansas last, so it will stay with Georgia when we come back. Well, coming up, Q Morrison, her journey through injury to be a healthy senior leader on this team. Did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more? So what are you waiting for? Hip hop group tag team to help you plan dessert? Ah, uh, fresh vanilla, rocky road, chocolate peanut butter cookie dough. Scoop this. Geico, see all the ways you could save. Wendy's didn't start the chicken wars. They just ended them with Wendy's new classic chicken sandwich. Nothing beats this classic. Grab it now in Wendy's two for five. Person for Georgia. She had an all-SEC freshman campaign, and then her sophomore and junior years both plagued with injuries. But this season, she's finally healthy, and she's gotten to a great place thanks to an amazing relationship with her head coach, Joni Taylor. Words can't even explain how Joni has impacted my life, like on, on and off the court. Um, if I'm late or having a rough week or something and she sees that, she she know that's not the usual. So she's calling my phone like, Q, what's up? Like, nine times out of 10, something is probably going on. And so by her knowing that and just knowing me on the court, she, she trusts me. And sometimes before the game, she she's like, Q, I need you to D that up. I need you to D her up. I'm like, I got you. And all she do for me, the least I can do is go out there and play my heart out. I love that lady so much. I love her. Could you not hear the emotion of how much Joni Taylor means to Q Morrison? And when you see a player like Q come on the court and play with such energy, she's playing for her head coach. Understand, Q Morrison in her class of 2017, she was the first to commit because she believed so much in Joni Taylor. And Hugh Morrison and her mom came on the official visit unofficially with Maya Caldwell because she wanted to help recruit other players. And she and Maya Caldwell have such a great relationship. I can guarantee you that's why Maya Caldwell has stepped up her game so far in this first quarter. Yeah, Q Morrison in foul trouble right now, but still that leadership piece for Georgia. Her, Gabby Connolly, Maya Caldwell, an amazing senior class that has really helped this Georgia team thrive and one of Joni Taylor's best teams at Georgia. I'll tell you, one of the things that Arkansas is going to have to find an answer for is Georgia on the glass. In the games that Arkansas has lost, they have, oh goodness, Stady went down, went down hard. And she had already hit the deck once pretty hard earlier on in the game, but looks like she's holding that right arm. They called a foul on Stady. Let's see if we can get another look at what happened. Can't really tell she was holding her elbow. Yeah, you know, she might have just come down on it at the right spot. Oof. Yeah. 
Stady has been such an important piece of Georgia's offense. It was last year around this time she had a conversation with Joni Taylor about wanting to do more for this Georgia team and she certainly has done more. Her numbers are up this season, averaging over 14 points per game, over seven and a half rebounds per game. And then that defensive presence, but they're walking her back to the locker room right now. We will try to get an update for you on Jenna Stady. That's a big loss for Georgia inside. Yeah, she brings so much length and scoring ability because not only scoring in the paint with a face-up game, but in talking about the work that she put in from last year, even into this year, Jody Taylor could not stay, say enough about the work of conditioning that Jenna Stady had put on, put in. And there's just an open lane to the basket for Marquisha Davis. So Georgia has now brought in Mallory Bates down low, number 22. Bates along with Maury Davenport were the two post players who had to step up against Tennessee in that second half. And Jenna Stady was struggling in that first half and they came in, they were a big defensive presence for the Georgia Bulldogs to pull off the comeback and win in Knoxville. Sixth turnover by Georgia. This could be a momentum swing for Arkansas. Arkansas can score so fast, and they do it just a few seconds into the shot clock. They can get right back in the game. Well, the thing about it is, is Mike Neighbors doesn't really have the traditional position as far as point guards, wings, forwards, but he calls them rabbits, rackers, locks, and dragons. And everybody on the team can at some point find themselves in any one of those four positions. And so they know what to do when they're caught in those positions. So they're ready to go score right away. Helps them get to that average of 86 points per game, which is sixth in the nation. Maya Caldwell, these are the positions you were talking about. If you go to an Arkansas practice, you may not understand what Mike Neighbors is talking about. Well, if you're a rabbit, you're getting down the floor quick so somebody can pass ahead. If you're a racker, you've got the ball and you can drive it all the way to the basket. If you're the locks, you're getting to the corner. And if you're a dragon, it's like trail position. You're ready to knock down that shot at the top of the key. Look how quickly Arkansas is catching up right now. Just a five-point game under two minutes to go in the second quarter. Well, a lot no of the Q opponents. Morrison for Georgia. She's got two fouls, and Jenna Stady left the game with an injury. So the opponents for Arkansas spend a lot of time in executing their offense and using the shot clock. Georgia can get right back, or Arkansas can get right back in the game because they like to score early in the shot clock. They're finding the best available shot that they can get to. Then they'll get into their actions, but more times than not, because they've got people who can shoot it, it's gonna, it's gonna be going up early. And four players for Arkansas, average double figures. Zimmer Ramirez at the line, she's one of them. Well, Wednesday on the SEC Network and the ESPN app, our basketball doubleheader starts in Gainesville with Vandy squaring off against Florida. That one's at 6.30, followed by Ole Miss and Arkansas at Bud Walton Arena. That's coming up on Wednesday. The men's Razorback team took down Vandy. Jalen Tate had a season-high 25 points in that game over the weekend. The women's team hoping they can get back on track. Arkansas has been off since last Monday night when they faced South Carolina, one of the top five teams in the nation. Well, Arkansas has had a tough beginning of the SEC conference play. Chloe Chapman. Dungey comes back in for Arkansas. Georgia's led by as many as nine. Hey, 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 hey. 
Ramirez over to Aaron Barnum. Razorbacks are so good in getting to the free throw line. Hammer Ramirez came off that stagger screen when the defense rotated over. Just a nice little drop pass to Barnum to get to the basket and then get to the free throw line. Arkansas already 7 of 7 from the charity stripe tonight. They shoot 73% as a team. And Mike Neighbors has the game broken down for his players. He wants 40% of their scoring to come from three. 30% from layups going straight down the lane, and the other 30% coming from the free throw line. He said, when I win two of those three, more times than my, not, my team wins the ball game. They swing it to the corner. Arkansas with just one three-pointer in the first quarter. They average nine and a half a game. If you look at this, Georgia has given up 25% in this first quarter at this rate. This really plays to the favor of Arkansas. Arkansas trailed by nine points, and here they are in a tie ball game after a 7-0 run. A chance to add to it with the ball in the hands of Amber Ramirez. Keep an eye, where is Chelsea Dungy? Chloe Chapman has the assignment. Barnum off balance on the shot. They had Dungy waiting in the corner. Tied up after the first 10 minutes here in Athens, 25 apiece in this top 25 matchup. My windshield just got broken. I feel like I need to blow off some steam. Let's go. Mr. Blanks, there's no need to be stressed. Skyco makes it easy to file a claim online or over the phone. That makes me want to celebrate with some fireworks. Five, six, seven, go. Boom, 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 boom. The DQ Chicken Strip Basket, now with house-made Hidden Valley Ranch, is a ranch dream come true. When you dream up juicy strips, all this, and house-made ranch. So follow your ranch dreams to DQ. Happy tastes good. Well, we've mentioned this Arkansas team had a tough schedule to start the season. They did get a signature win, though, over Baylor back on December 6th. But then they hit SEC play, and in their first six games, they faced four ranked opponents. And then it doesn't get easier because after today's top 25 game, Thursday, they're going to host UConn. It has been a tough start of the SEC season. We talked about the top uh, top ranked teams they play they they've also been on the road they had to go to Kentucky to Tennessee and to South Carolina so now what they're trying to do is get back in their winning ways hope that they're trying to steal one here in Georgia before they go home to force to face UConn and in talking to Mike neighbors he feels like you know what Gina wouldn't agree to play me if we did he didn't think that he was going to get a competitive game so that's going to be fun going back to Fayetteville, Arkansas, because you've got a Arkansas team that can shoot the ball extremely well. They like to get up and down. Will that bother the depth of Connecticut? It'll be interesting to watch. You can watch that Thursday at 5 Eastern on ESPN2. Jenna Stady has checked back into the game. She went down hard under the basket and was holding her right arm. But that was when Georgia had a big lead, and now we are tied up at 25 all, and she's back in the post. And Georgia's turnovers have really helped Arkansas get back in this game. That was an offensive foul on Sarah Ashley Barker. Georgia has turned it over 10 times, and Arkansas has 11 points off of those turnovers. We talk so much about Arkansas's offense. Their defense has been really good, very active so far for, against Georgia. Dungy already has eight points. 
and she'll get to add to it at the free throw line. Good out by Chloe Chapman. Chelsea, Chelsea Dungy gets the switch. Chloe Chapman switches off with Jenna Staley, and that's what makes Dungy so hard to guard because when she goes against the big, she plays like a guard. She's got that quick step and able to get to the free throw line. Dungy first in the SEC in points per game. Just her third season at Arkansas, started her career at Oklahoma. She really dedicated herself to getting in great shape in her first year that she could play at Arkansas. And she's gotten back to that sweet spot now in her senior season. That bucket from Gabby Connolly ends a 9-0 Razorback run. Stady pokes it free. Sarah Ashley Barker. That's why Joni Taylor inserted her into the lineup. Joni told us every time Sarah Ashley takes a shot, she believes it's going in. A two-time SEC freshman of the week. Didn't have any points, though, in their last two games. Has a three in a big moment tonight. Taylor Thomas, it just rattles all around that rim. Jenna Staney might have gotten away with one there. Still no Q Morrison on the floor for Georgia. She's got two fouls. You know, if Georgia wants to get in the back and forth, that plays into the hands of Arkansas. Connolly will go get it and slow things down. Little high low. Yeah, having Jenna Stady back has been big for Georgia because they can just throw over the top of the defense. She hasn't missed a shot. And then she can affect things big time on the defensive end. Absolutely, using that wingspan. Destiny Slocum steps up and takes the charge. You can use Jenna Stady in the pick and roll, and then she gets a great position underneath for the easy two. And you talked about it, Courtney, defensively. She's that backstop that Georgia's defense needs. And just what a difference in her overall game, and at such a key time for Georgia, too in her senior season to step up as she has. Rebound by Arkansas. Just their fourth that's, rebound of the game. That's what Arkansas is gonna have to do. If they're not making shots, they gotta create those second chance opportunities. Gabby Connolly, layup. That's nine straight points by Georgia. We're watching these two teams play. It is, it's gonna be that way all night. It's gonna see, as it started out, Georgia making their run. Then Arkansas makes their adjustment. They make their run. Georgia's got theirs going now. And I think Arkansas, it'll swing back their direction. Sarah Ashley Barker, her second foul, and it's Michaela Daniels at the line. Sunday, we start another afternoon of women's basketball with Missouri and Kentucky at 1 Eastern. But then these do, these games follow. Alabama squares off against number four, South Carolina, followed by number 22, Georgia, and number eight, Texas A&M. You can see them here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. South Carolina had a little scare. The LSU Tigers took them to the wire. Nobody wants to play LSU in the SEC. It's not fun. Well, because they D you up, and it, they have Kayla Pointer, who is just hard to keep up with. She's slippery. She's so good off the bounce. Georgia has LSU coming up on Thursday.
Well, Georgia tried to pull ahead early in that first quarter. They led by nine in the first quarter. Arkansas was able to catch back up and tie the ball game up thanks to turnovers and points off of those turnovers. What a move by Dungy. Unstoppable off the elbow. Jenna Stadium won't drop. Dungy's got it again. Offensive foul. How about that, Maya Caldwell? Joni Taylor was working the officials from the possession before. She felt like Dungy pushed Caldwell off when she was able to finish. And then the next time, I think the officials played a little extra attention to it. And that time called Chelsea Dungy for the offensive foul. That's her first. Fourth turnover by Arkansas. And the points just keep rolling for the Lady Bulldogs, Gabby Connolly. When Gabby Connolly is aggressive offensively, good things happen for the Georgia Bulldogs. She's got 12 points. Davis trying to get around Stady and turns the ball over and gives it to a Georgia team shooting 73% from the field. That's not a good shot for Jordan Isaacs right there. But Marquisa Davis, when she finds herself matched up with the Jenna Stady, she needs to look to drive to attack. She drove in that last time on the baseline to pass. Just the second three-pointer for Arkansas, and it comes from Destiny Slocum. Close one in Athens. Georgia leads at 37 to 33. the chicken wars they just ended them with wendy's new classic chicken sandwich nothing beats this classic grab it now in wendy's two for five it's time for some straight talk let's face it it happens all the time you fumble it fumble it splash it crack it well now straight talk wireless has phone protection that covers those kinds of mishaps with the new platinum unlimited plan which includes mobile protect just 65 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, and data, plus more features than ever, all on America's best networks. So the next time it happens, you can keep smiling. Straight Talk Wireless only at Walmart. As good as it gets. Oh! Are you serious? Got it! They can stroke it, baby. That is big time. Count it. Yes! What a heavyweight fight. Georgia on top 37 to 33 here in Athens. Gabby Connolly has had to step up and she's done it to the tune of 12 points, three assists already tonight. Well, she started out early, especially knocking down that first three. And I want you to look at how far back she is, not behind the women's three-point line, but the men's three-point line. When you knock down your first three like that, it's going to be a good night. And G Gabby Connolly has not slowed down since, especially having Q Morrison on the bench. She has taken it upon herself to be more of an offensive threat for the Georgia Bulldogs tonight. Senior stepping up for Georgia. Facing a little adversity. Q Morrison, as you mentioned, on the bench with two fouls. Jenna Stady went down for a brief period of time, holding her arm, but she's back in the game. They go right back to Connolly.
Ford is a little hesitant to throw over the top, but they can. But Jenna Stady getting in there for the rebound. Arkansas gets possession. Yeah, just looking at the rebounds, Stady has six rebounds. Arkansas as a team has seven. And that has been the Achilles heel for the Razorbacks in their losses. Out rebounded by 15, by an average of 15 rebounds. In the corner, Sarah Ashley Barker. She's hit one of those tonight. There's an offensive rebound for Georgia. What Arkansas has got to do, they got to put a body on somebody and check out. Make sure that Georgia doesn't get those second chance opportunities. Four seconds. And Georgia ran out, ran out of time. a good defensive series by Arkansas just rotating in the thing that Arkansas has figured out they've got to stop the ball from coming inside in the paint and force Georgia to take those perimeter shots Slocum stepping back but it's in and out again Jenna Stady on the glass Dunsey, oh, Georgia did a good job of covering up Aaron Barnum. But Dunsey didn't recognize everybody left her. Then she was open for the shot. Jalen Mason, short. Sadie's going to try the three again. Look, with it being a two-point game, I know Jenna Stady can knock down the three, but time and score, I don't think that's a good decision. And then it's an easy rebound and put back for Aaron Barnum. Seven straight points for Arkansas while Georgia's in a drought. Tough miss for Georgia. The Georgia needs to slow down right now. And passers into state. He got to recognize where the help's coming from on the backside. Well, next Sunday at 7 Eastern, 6 Central on the SEC Network, we'll have our latest episode of True South with John T. Edge traveling around Phoenix City, Alabama, making stops at the 14th Street Grill and checking out the jerk fried chicken at Rose's Caribbean in Columbus, Georgia. True South presented by Yellowwood. Arkansas in transition. It's Michaela Daniels. She's got nine. Look at how Arkansas, there's, there's four people defensively constantly checking the paint, trying to really shut down any of Georgia's offense going inside. Georgia's got Javin Nicholson in there now. Jenna Stady out of the game. Georgia's led by as many as nine here in the first half. Michaela Coombs at the point. And Barker's pass intercepted. Turnovers is going to be something Joni Taylor addressed with her team at halftime. 
15 turnovers for Georgia. They average 17 a game. When you see Arkansas only five, they're not a team that normally turns the ball over. Just over 10 turnovers a game. Dungy in and out. Coombs with the quick shot. Tied up Arkansas on a 9-2 run to end the half. Knotted at 39 apiece. Arkansas trying to push back after trailing by nine points in that first quarter. Can Gabby Connolly put Georgia back on top? We're tied at halftime. Inside Stegman Coliseum, we are tied up at 39 apiece in our top 25 battle here in. Courtney Lyle and Carolyn Peck with you. Chelsea Dungy, she is the leading scorer in the SEC, and she's the leading scorer in this game tonight with 14 points for Arkansas. Because she's aggressive. She didn't settle just for the three-point shot from the perimeter, but it and it doesn't matter who you put on her. She finds different ways to score. And I love watching her play because of the versatility and way she scores. She can score cutting, finding the open area. She'll hit you with a step back as well. And there's about three or four moves happening here. And that right to left crossover, it is deadly. Woo, don't go for that right hand because she's coming back strong to the left and she is hard to guard. But the other thing that Arkansas did is they picked up their defense and they started turning Georgia over and not just turning them over, but taking the ball and scoring at the other end. They let their offense, their defense fuel their offense and they were able to create and get easy baskets. So will Georgia do a better job in this second half of taking care of the basketball and will Arkansas heat back up from the three-point line, which is where they like to shoot the ball. Yeah, just two three-pointers for Arkansas in that first half. They average over nine threes per game. But yeah, going back to the turnovers, that was big. 15 turnovers by Georgia in the first half. They averaged 17 a game, but that led to 17 points for Arkansas. But the good news for Georgia, Q Morrison should be back in the game to run the offense. She was out with two fouls and that should help. Definitely so. She will help them to take care of the ball because she can she can control the basketball more and move Conley to a shooting position. She will also have the responsibility probably of defending Chelsea Dungy. That's how we saw Georgia's defense start this game with Q Morrison on Dungy. Conley really had to step up in that first half and run the point. She led Georgia with 12 points so far on 50% shooting. Gabby Conley's got her game face on. She's serious about this one now. Arkansas has not won in Athens since 2009, and Georgia wants to keep it that way. Stady on her own putback. Georgia just cleared everybody away, strong side, so it was an isolation for Jenna Stady down low. Q Morrison back guarding Chelsea Dungy. Almost forced a turnover. Daniel's in trouble. Jump ball. What's gonna be interesting to watch is Georgia defensively they are going underneath ball screens. Now here we see Stady going isolated down low and stays after it to get the offensive put back. But defensively, you watch the ball screens. Georgia's going under them and giving, really daring Arkansas to shoot those three-point shots. Instead, Destiny Slocum will drive to the SEC logo tied at 41 again. Georgia had a nine-point lead back in the first quarter of this game. Stady is the safety net for Georgia. Really the best pass is a shot for Georgia. Just put it up and then Stady can get the offensive put back. <laughs> She's got a double-double already. 12 points and 10 rebounds for Jenna Stady, her sixth of the season. Keep 
an eye on Amber Ramirez. She is really the helper, all helper inside for Arkansas's defense. Kick ball by Ramirez. Morrison just played three minutes in that first half. Georgia's now missed its last nine three-pointers. Stady again, offensive rebound. And Tama Thomas just took it from her. I think she might have been surprised for a second. She got away. <laughs> yeah. Rebounding has definitely gone in favor of Georgia in this game. That's not a surprise. Oh, clutch. Destiny Slocum sinks it in the corner, and she's fouled. Michaela Daniels makes this happen, though, off the ball screen. She makes the defense bite, and as soon as they do, that leaves... Destiny Slocum wide open in the corner. Just the third three-pointer for Arkansas. But that's what Mike Neighbors was talking to us about when talking about Michaela Daniels. She makes so many things happen in the game. She probably has the biggest impact on the game for Arkansas. Mike Neighbors talks about making this, make the defense wrong. And I asked him, what do you mean by that? And he said he knows that teams go into scouting reports of certain things they're trying to take away from your team. They're not going to take away everything. So when you notice the one or two things that they're going to take away, then he's got plan B and C to go to. And I asked him, who is your best player that makes those adjustments? And he said sophomore Michaela Daniels. She recognizes it and makes those adjustments. That's a high basketball IQ. I mean, this is a player they knew would have an impact on their team right away when they were recruiting her. And we saw her start every game as a freshman. Georgia's rebounds helping them out. Isaacs gets stripped. It'll stay with Georgia. Now, Arkansas is smaller in size, and making bounce passes into the post, not a good idea. Need to play over the top, up in the air, just like that. Ramirez for three. Ramirez has not hit a three-pointer tonight. You watch, too, when Arkansas takes a three, they're sending four people back to get back transition defense, not going after an offensive rebound. That's a good finish by Jenna Stady. And in talking about passing to the big girl, keep it up high. No need to throw her a bounce pass down where the smaller Arkansas players are. Throw it up toward the rim. Let her go get it. Stady has scored all six of Georgia's points here in the third quarter. It's been one season at Maryland as a freshman. Didn't see a lot of playing time. This has really been the season where she shined in her career for Georgia. Well, she's the nucleus of their offense, and so most of the opposing teams, they have to focus on stopping Stady inside, and then that will open up everything on the perimeter. Blocking foul on Maya Caldwell. Her second. Dungy six of six from the free throw line tonight.
Mike Neighbors talks about how Dungy is so hard to guard because she is going full head of steam to the basket and making the officials make the decision, is the defense there or not? Caldwell trying to make up for it with a bucket on the other end. And now the officials have called a timeout. Jesse Dickerson pointed to himself. trying to figure out what's going on at the table, but Joni Taylor was standing right next to Jesse Dickerson when he blew the whistle and stopped play. Right after the bucket by Caldwell. Again, we haven't received an official word on what they were looking at or what Joni Taylor wanted looked at. Whatever it was, I don't think Joni was happy about it. She gave him a little of <laughs> the side eye. <laughs> we're being told now that Coach Taylor thought there might have been a foul given to an incorrect player that they went over to the table and took a look at it. Here's Ramirez in the corner. Chelsea Dungy up over her head. That's a big offensive rebound there. A little English off the glass for the finish, too. Dungy, just one of many players who have had an impact for Arkansas, who is a transfer. Dungy, of course, started at Oklahoma. Amber Ramirez started at TCU. Destiny Slocum started at Maryland, then went to Oregon State. But watch Chelsea Dungy grab this rebound, and then just a little English off the glass up over her head. I believe Chelsea Dungy is pro ready. And it's not just about the talent that she brings to the court. She can score in so many different ways, but also her tenacity. She's got the toughness to play at the next level. You need that to go to the WNBA. And something we were talking about pregame too, for Dungy and for the other players for Arkansas, this schedule that they're on, where they are traveling in the day of the game due to COVID-19 concerns, they're trying to keep down their contact as little as possible. I mean, that schedule, that routine of having to travel and play the same day, that can help her in her professional career. Well, understanding that you have to be ready to turn it on when you get off the plane. And that's what Chelsea Dungy is showing that she was ready to do today in Athens. Arkansas has not been shut down by any COVID problems so far this season. Mike Seven seconds. A little bit of little luck goes with that. Mike Neighbors likes what Barnum brings. She is an aggressive, offensive-minded. It can be a go-to post inside. There she is, crashing the boards. Why not do it again? Yeah. 
Watch how Barnum is really battling with Jenna Stady down low. Michaela Daniels there to help on the backside. Morrison running out of time. It's going to be a shot clock violation on Georgia. Arkansas on top here in Athens. Aaron Barnum has been a great inside presence. Can't get the ball to Dungey. Barnum says, no problem. I can take care of things for you inside attacking in the paint. Ball in, but on a budget. The new $1 your way menu at Burger King will help you stack that bread and spend less bacon. So try a flame grilled bacon cheeseburger, chicken junior, fries, or a drink for just a dollar each. So save that bacon and get it on your burger instead because getting more for your buck at BK just hits different. The new $1 your way menu now at Burger King. Your way, way better. T-Mobile knows the new year brings big news. <laughs> Get an iPhone 12 with 5G on us on every single plan. And save 20% in your bill every month versus the other guys. That's right, iPhone 12 on us, only at T-Mobile. Thursday, there are two big SEC games, and Arkansas will be involved in one of them. This was an elite addition to the schedule as Arkansas was going to have a very long break with Vanderbilt canceling its season. UConn needed a game to play, and so now the Huskies are going to travel to Fayetteville on Thursday. You can see it on ESPN2. And Mike Neighbors, he talked about having really an alliance of call, people to call if he had an opening in a date because of a cancellation. And so Gino Ariema and the UConn Huskies were on that list, and it really just happened out because UConn had had a game to be canceled. Mike Neighbors and Arkansas needed a game. And look, how does this look to the committee? Because Arkansas could have had a day off. But what did they say? Oh, we want to add a game, and not just any game. We want to play UConn. I mean, that's a bold statement right there. It's also going to be a homecoming for Krista Williams of UConn. She's from Little Rock, Arkansas, so not too far from Fayetteville. But that'll be a fun one to start off our SEC games on Thursday. It'll be followed by Mississippi State and South Carolina on ESPN. Javin Nicholson coming in right away and being a scoring threat inside for Georgia. Joni Taylor talks about going to her bench, her depth that she has, and for the most part this season, they have been ready when called upon. Yeah, that's been one of the differences for Georgia. Joni Taylor called it the sauce on this season as having that quality depth. <laughs> I loved it when she said that. But look at the bench points for Georgia in their last four games. Now, obviously, that was down against South Carolina, and they lost that game. But that just shows you how critical Georgia's depth has been. And Joni Taylor is counting on her bench. Jordan Isaacs is just having the battle down low. But specifically in the post, Javin Nicholson, Mallory Bates, Maury Davenport to come in and give that presence inside, especially when she's got to give Jenna Stady a blow. Georgia with only nine points from their bench tonight. We're just switching the ball screens now, trying to take away the drive to the basket. Dungey runs into a hard hedge off that screen. Slocum short. Dungey. 
You think Chelsea Dungey wants the basketball right now? She wants to win. That's how she's playing. She's giving all out effort because she wants to win. Arkansas hasn't won here since 2009. Can they change that tonight? Chelsea Dungey thinks so. The DQ Chicken Strip Basket, now with house-made Hidden Valley Ranch, is a ranch dream come true. When you dream of juicy, all-white meat chicken strips, crispy golden fries, buttery Texas toast, and house-made Hidden Valley Ranch. You heard that right. House-made Hidden Valley Ranch. So follow your ranch dreams straight to your DQ for the Chicken Strip Basket. DQ. Happy tastes good. How about no? No. Uh-uh, no way. Come on, no. 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 Only Discover has no annual fee on any card. By five points, just an incredible effort we're seeing from Chelsea Dungey. Let's take you back to that last play, the extra hustle she put in for Arkansas to get the basketball. This sets the tone. When your best player puts out this kind of effort, everybody sees it. They recognize, look, Chelsea Dungey, she's not just wanting the basketball, she's wanting to win right now. Remember, Arkansas is two and four in the SEC right now. They've got to play their way to get in that top half of the conference. Now, this is how the SEC standings shape up right now. Of course, South Carolina is at the top. Georgia is four and two in SEC play. Arkansas two and four, but they did start out with a really tough SEC schedule facing four ranked teams. Those are their four losses in SEC play. They do have a really solid win on their resume. They were able to upset number two Baylor earlier in the season back in December. They're projected as a number six seed right now by Charlie Green. But they're going to have some work to do. They need to win on the road. They need to try to get this one in Athens uh, to really make up for because they have already played Kentucky, Tennessee, Texas A&M, and South Carolina, the ranked teams on the top of the schedule. Sarah Ashley Barker giving Georgia some key buckets. Georgia really trying to take care of and protect home court right now. Shot clock still on for Arkansas. Here goes Slocum. Arkansas ran out of time. That's well defended by Georgia. The ball went to Barnum at the free throw line. There was a pin down, and nobody got beat. Q Morrison, elbow. Arkansas takes a lead into the fourth quarter in Athens. Razorbacks looking to get their third win in SEC play. This would be over a top 25 team. I have the power to lower my blood sugar and A1C. Because I can still make my own insulin. And Trulicity activates my body to release it, like it's supposed to. Trulicity is for type 2 diabetes. It's not insulin and I only need to take it once a week. Plus, it lowers the risk of cardiovascular events. 
Trulicity isn't for people with type 1 diabetes or diabetic ketoacidosis. Don't take Trulicity if you're allergic to it. You or your family have medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2. Stop Trulicity and call your doctor right away if you have an allergic reaction, a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, changes in vision, or diabetic retinopathy. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Taking Trulicity with sulfonylurea or insulin raises low blood sugar risk. Side effects include nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, belly pain, and decreased appetite which lead to dehydration and may worsen kidney problems i have it within me to lower my a1c ask your doctor about trulicity back here in stegman coliseum arkansas on top of georgia 58 to 53 just 10 minutes to go in this one courtney lyle national championship winning head coach carolyn peck with you and we are seeing a fight from the razorbacks right now against a really good defensive georgia team and what Mike Neighbors was trying to do, remember, he wants to get 40% of his scoring from the three-point line, 30% from the free throw line, and 30% from layup. So we have a breakdown of looking at those percentages and how close they are. Yeah, so here are the goals every year. This is in a perfect world for Mike Neighbors, what you just said, the percentages breakdown, and then what they're doing tonight against Georgia. The magic of television, so 48% layups, 22%. That's close at the free throw line and only 16% from the three-point line. But Mike Neighbor said, I don't need to win all three categories. I just need two of the three. And right now, he can. Be, I can guarantee you, he's going to look to try to attack more to either get more layups or get themselves to the free throw line. Now the three ball has not been the biggest weapon for Arkansas tonight. They average shooting over nine threes per game, but just three this evening. Well, a lot of times Arkansas is able to get the three point shot because one on one, they can break you down and cause an additional or that second line of defense to have to rotate over and then opens up the kick out. Well, right now, Georgia has not been so much been able to be broken down defensively and have been able to stay one on one. Well, Arkansas's last eight points have been in the paint. Well, Sunday, we start another afternoon of women's basketball. First, we'll have Missouri and Kentucky, but following that game, Alabama and South Carolina at 3 Eastern, then at 5 Georgia and Texas A&M. That will be a really big test for this Georgia team. You talk about rebounding in that game, too. Texas A&M is a fantastic rebounding team. They got a monster in India Jones, and Sierra Johnson has joined the rebounding party as well for the Aggies. Stady with the block. Q Morrison, yes! Morrison now with four points. She only played three minutes in the first half due to foul trouble. And we remember what a spark she was in the second half for Georgia in the win in Knoxville, Tennessee. Michaela Daniels. Super sophomore, making it happen. Sarah Ashley Barker in stride. Hello, Jalen Mason. Michaela Daniels, though, made that happen. That hard attack down the middle of the lane, making the defense just bite a step. That opened up the three-point shot. Trading threes, Q Morrison. Here we go. Yeah, Stady didn't have to go out and guard Thomas out there on the wing. Dungy's got to take that shot. Running out of time, way behind the arc, and it's short.
Michaela Daniels finds Jalen Mason that penetrate in the middle to knock down the three. And then Q Morrison with the answer on the other end, three point line. I don't understand, you got Jenna Stady, the biggest player out there, posting up Sarah Ashley. Parker, I think it needs to be a little role reversal there. Stady called for the foul, and Chelsea Dungy will go back to the free throw line. I know Jenna Stady can hit that face-up shot, but right now, time and score, the for sure and high percentage shot is with Jenna Stady down low in the paint. Dungy has hit eight free throws. Free throws were so big in Arkansas's upset of Baylor. They hit 30 free throws in that game. Yeah, you just caused Kim Mulkey to get a little upset if she <laughs> gets reminded of how many times her team sent Arkansas to the free throw line. And now Stady will go there. See, right there, that should be the easy two for Georgia. Going inside the Stady, she's either going to have the easy score, the drop step, or they got to foul her to stop her inside. Sadie's got a double-double, 14 points, 12 rebounds. Wednesday on the SEC Network and the ESPN app, our basketball doubleheader starts in Gainesville with Vandy squaring off against Florida at 6.30 Eastern, followed by Ole Miss and Arkansas at Bud Walton Arena. Florida's had a big week. They upset Tennessee last week. Tennessee now on a two-game losing streak. He's one of the top teams in the nation. One of these teams we have tonight coming off losses to the top team in the SEC, that would be South Carolina. Joni Taylor told us you got to practice and like you're going to beat the standard, beat the standard every game, getting ready for those South Carolina teams, and then you go match up against them and see how you fare. Her defense did a good job. They did hold South Carolina to only 62 points. But she complimented South Carolina. So much is said about the variety of ways that they can score. A lot's being made about Aaliyah Boston. But it's the defense, the pressure that South Carolina can put on you and really speed you up. And she said that's what she felt like affected her team the most, especially rushing shots and turning the ball over. Yeah, you see South Carolina's season numbers on this graphic. They average 83 points per game. Georgia just 62 points in that game. They shot 36% from the field and had 20 turnovers in the game. So you can take from that, Joni Taylor can look at that and say, you know what, my team can defend one of the best teams in the country. Now, how do I score against one of the top defending teams in the country? Stady turned it over. And Arkansas is going back to the free throw line. And Mike Neighbors has the trust in Michaela Daniels with the basketball and all the action and concentration focus on where is Chelsea Dungy and how is she trying to get open and making sure those switches are happening. We've got Michaela Daniels who can take you one-on-one -on -one and go for the score. Now she came into Arkansas just so mature. She comes from a military family, both her parents in the military, and she said, <laughs> Mike Neighbors said she's been prepared for anything that comes her way in life. We just watch her composure on the floor. And the trust her head coach has in her. Connolly, pure at the free throw line. Connolly's, Connolly's been relatively quiet. She had 12 in the first half. She's going to have to step up if Georgia wants the ability to protect home court. Those are her first points in the second half. 
Georgia fans wanted the foul called on Dungy. Morrison magic in transition. Amber Ramirez just two points in this game for Arkansas. I love Q Morrison in transition and delivers the perfect pass to Sarah Ashley Barker so she can go right into it. No need to come down, just serve it up. Q Morrison. Barker had no points over her last two appearances for Georgia. She's got 10 this evening. Arkansas trailed by nine points in the first quarter. They've got a three-point lead here with under five to play. <laughs> Connolly, corner pocket, no. Well, it's helped for Georgia to have Q back on the floor. And also, they've cut down on the turnovers. They had 15 turnovers in the first half, just three here in the second half. Well, Georgia has another decision maker on the floor, maturity ball handler. That has definitely helped. Barnum's up to 15 points. Her career high is 17. But you see who knows how to get the ball inside? It was Q Morrison from the top. And Q Morrison making such an impact being back on the floor after sitting out with two fouls in that first half. Her team down by five. The DQ Chicken Strip Basket, now with house-made Hidden Valley Ranch, is a ranch dream come true. When you dream of juicy, all-white meat chicken strips, crispy golden fries, buttery Texas toast, and house-made Hidden Valley Ranch. You heard that right. House-made Hidden Valley Ranch. So follow your ranch dreams straight to your DQ for the Chicken Strip Basket. DQ. Happy tastes good. It's your grandma and grandpa. Hi, Mijo. Hi. Oh, it's Nomi. Okay, come on. <laughs> Wireless you can afford for the moments you can't afford to miss. An eye on that South Carolina game. I mean, LSU had the Gamecocks on their heels all afternoon. Then Don Staley called that timeout, came out with some full court pressure and turned LSU over, able to pull off the win. But also after that, it was Texas A&M and Missouri. Ladasia Williams and Asia Blackwell, they tried to battle all they could to try to steal one from Texas A&M. You know, Texas A&M having a really solid season. We've got a close one here in Athens. It was just Thursday that Aaliyah Boston had her second career triple-double. It was against this Georgia team, 16 points, 11 rebounds, 10 blocks. And then, Carolyn, you and I got to see this one yesterday. Kentucky did not look like Kentucky against Tennessee yesterday. But Renaya Davis looked like some Renaya Davis. She had 20 rebounds on Sunday. That was fun. Arkansas is going to have a big test coming up next, too. They'll face UConn on Thursday. Georgia's getting some good defense from Q Morrison now that she's back on the floor. Well, Q Morrison is the one that really talks about defending that right-to-left crossover by Chelsea Dungy, and she's going to have the assignment to try to... You're not going to be able to stop Dungy, but slow her down. That's going to be a fun matchup to watch the next four minutes of this ballgame. Dungy has 24 points as Jenna Stady hits from the, th from the free throw line. Barnum. Big 
bucket for Gabby Connolly, and Georgia is within one. I have seen Gabby Connolly just turn it up and make up for lost time. She was slow getting out of the gates in this second half. It's time for her to get some more Connolly time. Dungey just got stopped by Stady. It's going to stay with the Razorbacks, though. The defensive presence and the height of Jenna Stady really big in that possession. Stady has five blocks tonight. See, now Stady needs to go down and plant. Make herself a presence inside. Barker tips the ball back to Q Morrison. Sarah Ashley Barker with a great defensive play, and Georgia has the ball again. Barnum whistled for the foul. It's a great heads-up play by the freshman. Just relentless, staying after the basketball to save the possession. Because this could have potentially been, or that was the foul there, but it could have potentially been another Georgia turnover. But Sarah Ashley Barker saved that possession. Well, Joni Taylor told us Barker is an elite defender. She just doesn't know what she's doing out there yet, but she goes 100 <laughs> miles an hour. Hey, the first part of defense is effort. Makes a nice entry pass to Jenna Stady, and she'll go back to the free throw line. And the main way that Arkansas can try to slow down getting the ball inside is not just the double team to Jenna Stady, but you're going to have to apply some more ball pressure on the ball handler. Georgia looking for its first lead since the 9.02 mark in the third quarter. Dogs back on top. Six straight. Connolly got switched on Barnum, and then Stady was able to switch back. Q Morrison, big defensive play. Forces Dungey into the turnover. Arkansas ball. Hugh Morrison matched up. She goes underneath the screen. That was a good no-call by the official. Let him play. This time they will call it on Stady. That's her fourth. Arkansas brings back in Taylor Thomas to replace Aaron Barnum. Stady's still in there with four fouls. Destiny Slocum at the line. Well, with less than two minutes left to go, you've got to leave Jenna Stady in the game. She is their offensive threat inside with the height advantage. Stady with 20 points, 13 rebounds. Stady's got to want the basketball. Arkansas has missed its last four shots. And Mike Neighbors will call a timeout.
Well, every Friday night, gymnastics takes over the SEC network. And this week, our doubleheader starts in Gainesville with number one, Florida, hosting Missouri at 7 Eastern. Then it's number six, Arkansas, and the number 10, Gym Dogs, from right here in Stegman Coliseum in Athens. And Courtney Kopetz Carter, you see her there inside Stegman Coliseum, one of the best NCAA gymnasts of all time. She's now the head coach, has been for several years now of her alma mater at Georgia. Gym dogs doing big things. Joni Taylor is trying to get her Lady Bulldogs to do big things and get a ranked win tonight. Ever since that Tennessee game, Jenna Stady has tried to right the ship. She had just two points in that game, didn't really play in the second half, maybe a few seconds. Tonight, 20 points, 13 rebounds. She's going to have to have a big presence for the, for the next minute and a half if Georgia wants a chance at protecting home court. Back to the free throw line goes Dungy. It's the third called on Barker. Dungy 10 for 12 tonight. She has been so aggressive, and it hasn't mattered who has been on her. Hugh Morrison, Maya Caldwell, that time Sarah Ashley Barker. She's been aggressive. You know, Dungy had the ability to leave early last season and go to the WNBA draft, but she did not. And that extra year at Arkansas, I mean, she's just even upped her game more. Connolly for two, yes. Arkansas calls timeout. And it looks like Mike Neighbors will advance the basketball. Conley is trying to get an offense set up. Instead, she just took it upon herself, knocking down the two. Conley's got 18 points. Arkansas ball in a tie game. Georgia is led by as many as nine points, but that was back in the first quarter. Well, Mike Neighbors has to be looking at an opportunity to attack the basket, attack in, and then if you can get to the free throw line, do so. But if they stop you from helping in, kick out to the three. He's got that much confidence. But to do it early so that if Georgia, you score, Georgia gets a possession, Arkansas ends up with the last possession of the game. Arkansas looking for their first win in Athens since 2009. It would be their first win over a ranked opponent on the road since 2014. Well, keep an eye on this. Arkansas only one timeout left. Georgia still has all four for this second half. Both teams in the bonus. Arkansas needs points, and they need to get out of a scoring drought. Slocum. Back to Jalen Mason. It's short. Jody's not going to leave. Use her, to use her timeout. There's a 10-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Q Morrison with the ball. Four seconds for Connolly. To Q. Huge rebound by Jordan Isaacs. Not much time. Gabby Connolly sinks it.
Gabby Connolly with time winding down for two. And Joni Taylor has the confidence. No panic timeout. Her senior, her graduate, has the basketball and lets her make a play. Hits the two to take the lead. Connolly had to step up in the first quarter when Q Morrison was sent to the bench with two fouls. She ran this team like the senior leader that she is, and she just crushed that bucket. They're at the monitor right now, taking a look at the bucket. Yeah, it was definitely a two-point shot. They did confirm that at the monitor. Gabby Connolly, ice water. She's on the line, but it doesn't matter. You just need to go ahead by one. What did she do? She went and got two. Connolly has scored six of Georgia's last eight points. So remember, this wasn't a timeout. It was in a, a review. They were going to the monitor to double check that that was a two and not a three for Connolly. 20 points, four assists for Gabby. Just point nine for Arkansas. Georgia holds off a hot shooting Razorback team. It's a top 25 win for Joni Taylor and the Georgia Lady Bulldogs thanks to a last second shot from Gabby Connolly. The SEC Conference tells you how competitive it is down to the wire. But when you've got senior leadership on the floor, Joni Taylor's got to have great confidence in what she has, especially from Gabby Connolly. The second ranked win for this Georgia team, and they get it over number 19, Arkansas. It's a tie ball game. Jordan Isaacs with the big rebound. Get the ball to your senior. Coach says no timeout needed. Connolly, you can do this. And she did. That's huge for the Georgia Bulldogs. Gabby Connolly comes up big to hang on as Georgia defeats number 19 Arkansas in Athens, 75 to 73. Not done yet here in Stegman Coliseum. Georgia, a huge win over a top 25 team. I like to kick it.
What a finish here in Athens. Georgia narrowly beats Arkansas 75 to 73 thanks to a last second shot from Gabby Connolly. Georgia now improves to five and two in SEC play. Arkansas falls to two and five, but what a big win for Georgia. Their second win over a ranked team. The first one was over Tennessee. And this one was a nail biter all the way down to the end. What has been the Achilles heel for Arkansas? Rebounding and Jordan Isaacs gets a huge offensive rebound that creates another possession, another opportunity and senior Gabby Connolly is able to knock it down to take the lead. Connolly finishing with 20 points, three rebounds, four assess, assists, and the biggest shot of the game. The senior gets it done, propels Georgia to victory over the number 19 team in the nation. Lady Bulldogs take it 75 to 73. Shoulder to shoulder.